We are live. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending on where you are. I think I did that in the wrong order, but it doesn't matter. It's Sunday, September 5th, 2021, 902 a.m. Pacific time. I'm here in Las Vegas. Let's get this live stream up and running here. I see we have a few of you already here. I got uh, our regular here, William Cohen. Good to see you. Looking forward to another great live stream. The Dell Inspiron looks like a good value for the money. Absolutely. We're going to talk about that today. I have some other laptops that came in. We're going to talk about that as well. Uh, we're off to another great live stream. Good to see you, Rafael Perez. How are you? Um, let's talk uh, ThinkPad X60. Good to see you, my friend. Have I been installing Windows 11 on these laptops? I have, I have a couple of laptops I've dedicated to using Windows 11. I'm going to talk about that very soon, so stay tuned. Uh, watching live from Hong Kong. That's good to see, my friend. Uh, tomorrow is school for you. Good. Got to learn something there. <laughs> uh, where is the, where has NVX been? So this has the, okay, so this has the 3050 uh, GPU. Now there is a, a, a moment, we're going to go over the different SKUs that has a 3060 and apparently has three fans and five heat sinks or heat pipes or whatever you want to call them, uh, which is a little bit more advanced, uh, more money, of course. But what Dell sent me, and this is what you're looking at here, is... Um, Dell sent me this, of course, the Inspiron 16, but it has the 3050, or the in, Intel Core i7-11800 H processor. So it has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. So let's take a look. Let's start off going up with an overview on this, and then we'll take a look at the different SKUs. We'll price them out and see where you go. So the video froze. Check your internet. It looks okay to me. Looks like we got good bandwidth, William. So uh, hopefully everybody can hear me and see me okay. I hope it's, uh-oh, this is not a good sign. Can you hear me and see me okay? So we have some technical difficulties. Yes, I did pay the bill. Okay, it looks like we have good bandwidth. Okay. All right, people, let me know. Can you see me? It's fine now. Okay, let's get back to the regular, regularly scheduled program here. Can you hear me and see me okay? It's fine now. Okay, uh, I have good bandwidth. It's showing good bandwidth. I didn't see anything. It might be on YouTube's end, but hopefully we are back and ready to go. Let's rock and roll on this. This is the Inspiron HP. The Inspiron HP, the Inspiron 16 Plus. Now, I dropped, I dropped my video yesterday. It's doing well. And you can go check it out. It's over my channel. I also have a link in today's live stream as well as in that video to where you can get it. And there you go. Now, here, as far as what we see here, the laptop has a 16-inch display, which you see here. And that is a really nice display. It's a 3072 by... Uh, 1920 and that is a 3k display okay 3k display 
and it has a 301 nits of brightness. They claim 300 nits. I got 301. Again, I showed you in the video. Now, as far as the keyboard and everything concerned with that, this is an, a metal deck. This is a pretty much all metal design. This might be plastic on the um, around the edges here, around the, the bezels might be plastic, but rest, everything else is metal. And uh, this keyboard, a little bit shallow in terms of the key travel, has a numpad, so if your number crunch is out there, you're going to like that. I know, William, you have commented on that already. It looks like a good implementation on that. And then you have uh, a two-stage backlight on this, which has been working well. And, um, and then we also have uh, a pretty nice, spacious touchpad. I don't think it's... It might, it's a very smooth surface. It might even be glass. I'm not even sure. I'll have to double check. It looks to me like it might be, but it's a very smooth surface and very responsive. I have no complaints on that front. Uh, as far as anything else, as far as the speakers on this, that what I would say is the weakest point of the laptop. Not great in terms of the overall audio quality, but I'd say it's not bad. Uh, definitely not in the same class as the Dell XPS 15 or 17 on that Windows, and certainly not on the MacBook Pro 16, which I have here, which to me is the best. So that is pretty much uh, really a good deal here. Now, pricing is pretty good. Now, price as configured at the time I did my video is $1,450, but I think if we go over to the website and we can uh, take a look at it, um, let me go here for a second and then, oops, wrong one. Let's go here and let me bring up the website and we'll talk about the internals in a moment. Uh, let me put this up here. Okay. So, and let me go here, put myself down there. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, there is a sale going on right now. It seems uh, for Labor Day weekend, and it's, I think, 19 hours left or something to that effect. Uh, right now, the starting price is no longer fourteen twenty. I think that's what I showed in the video. It's now ten nineteen ninety nine, and that will get you the Core i5, which you see here. Uh, you get 8 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of SSD. You see, get, there's only one display option, and there's, of course, one color option, which is the Miss Blue, which I absolutely love. Now, if we bump it up to the Core i7, which I have here, then Windows 10 English, okay, and then we go to 16 gigabytes of RAM, and we go to 512 is what they gave me, and then this has the 3050, and we're looking at 1449. If we bump it up to the 3060, they make you go to a terabyte, by the way. This 1649 might be an ex, it's worth an extra $200 in my opinion, because you're bumping up in the storage and you're bumping up in the GPU. Not to say that the 3050 is bad, it's not, but you're good, moving to a 3060 with not, not four gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM or video RAM, but six gigabytes of GDDR6 video RAM, which is great. And it's also a 60 watt GPU, which is more powerful. So I think, to me, it's worth the extra $200 and pay that $1649.99 because you're getting more graphics performance, a more capable GPU, not to say that the 3050 is bad. It's not. It's good. Uh, and you're getting more storage. Now, I did show you in the video, and I can show you here, there is a lot of upgradability here we can talk about. There's two slots for SSDs. Now, these are PCIe 3, not PCIe 4. The 4 obviously would be faster. We saw some very good reads and writes on some of those that we've been seeing as of late. But this is PCIe 3. Numbers were good, pretty decent. But again, at this price point, I'm not going to fault them too much on the reads and writes. They were certainly fast enough to do everything you need to do with it. And then you have uh, two RAM slots. Now, the two RAM slots I show you in the video and you see them here, and this RAM is um, upgradable to the user, which is always good. There's SOTUM slots that you can pop out, and I show you in the video, and as you see here, it's the X16 RAM, not the faster X8. Now, this was the same situation we saw with the XPS 15 9510, but on the XPS 17, we saw the faster X8, 
This is like the XPS 15. This has the X16. Not a big deal. Just wanted to point it out because I know some people were questioning what kind of or asking what kind of RAM is this. Now, the RAM runs in dual channel mode. It's perfectly fine for whatever you need to do. And by the way, getting back to those SSD scores, here you see the scores, uh, good reads, decent writes, but nothing close to what we saw with the PCIe Gen 4, which got some really good reads and writes. And I agree, uh, Raphael, not a bad laptop, that's for sure. Uh, Jeff, the upgradability definitely stood out to me as well. For this price, we don't normally see these type of upgradability, two RAM slots, two SSD slots, which I love. I think that's a great option. A 3K display, an 86 watt hour battery that actually did pretty good on my uh, test. It did over 10 hours, it did over, uh, what was it, 12 hours on my continuous web surfing test. It, it beat out, I think it's over, I don't remember. Let's go to the thing. <laughs> I can't remember now. I got so many, I'm working on so many laptops right now. Uh, battery life here, as you can see. Oh, I'm sorry. 10 hours and four minutes. It beat out the XPS 15 9510 that I have here, my Core i9. That has an OLED, 3.5K OLED display that did eight hours and 19 minutes. This did 10 hours and four minutes. Real world mixed usage, anywhere from eight to nine hours, I would say, is pretty good. Fan noise, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, has been very good on this laptop. Uh, and as far as the thermals are concerned, not too much throttling. You can game on this. I showed you some of the numbers and some of the, uh, the the benchmarks, as you see here. Very impressive stuff. Not quite as good as the Core i9 on my XPS 15, but again, this is half the price. So that costs three thousand dollars. This is about fourteen fifty to fifteen hundred. Actually, fourteen fifty. It's even. It's more than half of that. Is there more video problems today? Oh no. And yeah, I'm seeing it here also. Oh boy. So we got, we're getting video problems. Oh boy. Oh. Maybe I have to restart. Let's hopefully this will clear up. All right, let me know. It should be getting better now. All right, Ra Raphael seems about it's fine now. Yeah, you're back up. Okay, we're having trouble today, people. I don't know how much longer we're going to go. Uh, unfortunately, if uh, it really is not working out today, it seems like. So... If we're getting buffering, I'm plugged in. I'm, I'm actually streaming on Ethernet. Uh, I'm showing decent bandwidth now. It's been, been inconsistent, though. Yeah, I'm on Ethernet. Yeah, it seems to be intermittent. Hopefully, it'll clear up very soon. I hope you didn't miss too much. <laughs> oh, boy, I hate when these things happen. I can't wait to get fiber here. Uh, this is just ridiculous. Uh, Cox here in Las Vegas, if you're watching, if you're listening, please do something about this. Okay, so it does have Thunderbolt 4, and there's Thunderbolt 4 on this, and it's full service. You can do everything with it, data charge, display out. PCIe 4, I guess they're trying to save money, Ben, uh, if that's the case. I could live with that for this price tag, for considering what you're getting. Not a huge deal. PCIe 4 would definitely be better, but I don't think most people are going to notice too much of a difference, to be honest. I need some suggestion. Which would you choose, the latest AMD Ryzen 7 or the latest? Or Okay, we'll talk more about this, Akash, later. Let's keep going what we're doing now. Do you think the GTX 3060 is worth against, you mean the RTX 3060, Michael, uh, against the 3050 and the chassis size and thermal maximum? I would go with the 3060 because um, the 3060 to me 
First of all, it's a 60 watt. It'll be a little bit better and it has more video RAM. So for $200, you're getting double the storage in that SKU as I showed you and you're getting better uh, better GPU performance. So I don't know if it's gonna make that much a difference as far as the thermals are concerned. I don't have it here, but my guess would be you should be fine. You could probably buy two of these for the price of the expensive Dell you purchased. And that is the point, right? It is a re really good deal. It really is a good deal. We only have 41 today. I don't know if it was the buffering that scared everybody away. Not too much of a turnout for this one. Interesting. Uh, it's a holiday weekend here in the United States. It's Labor Day weekend, so I'm not expecting a lot of people. And by the way, I've got some more stuff on the way that's going to be looking pretty good. So I have, and I'm, I'm finishing the video today, I have the Acer Swift X, which I'm very impressed with, a 14-inch laptop that has a RTX 3050 Ti that's paired with the Ryzen 7 5800H in a 14-inch laptop. Uh, we're going to talk more about that upcoming this week when I release that video. Uh, I appreciate that, Raphael, and that is a good suggestion, everybody. Please hit the like button so we can get this spread out over YouTube. Only 38 of you are watching. I guess a lot of you are away, so... A nice little intimate affair here, I guess. And I can say it is holiday weekend, so I'm not expecting a lot of people today. How is the sound quality and screen quality? Uh, sound is, I would say, adequate, not great. Uh, screen quality is excellent. Um, this display is very good. Now, this is a 3K display. It has a resolution of 3072 by 1920. And good to see you, Nadine, taking an art class on Zoom at 9.30, so no problem. Glad that you were able to stop by, but very good display, 3K display. Wasn't the performance of the Acer Swift X limited? I'm going to talk about that uh, very soon. Uh, I was a little bit limited, but we're going to talk about it. Uh, but it is a nice laptop nonetheless. It's a good deal, especially for $9.99. I have that video coming up. Hopefully, you guys will watch it. Now, as far as how these videos are doing, I released this past week... And I'm going to take a quick look to see how it's doing. Um, I did my Inspiron 16 Plus, which was released yesterday. Before that, I did the Slim 7i Pro. That's doing well. We hit over 10,000 views already on that, and it's going strong right now. And before that, I showed you the two IdeaPad uh, 5 Pro 16s that I have, both the Intel and AMD. And I'm working on the individual reviews on that. I know some of you are waiting for that, so stay tuned. So a lot, lot going on in the channel. It seemed to revive things a little bit as we end the summer here and we start going into the fall season or the autumn and then into the holiday season. There's a lot of stuff coming up. We have uh, Microsoft is having an event at the end of this month or in a couple of weeks that I think we're going to see a pro version of the Surface Laptop 4 or an update with a rebranding of the Surface Book so we'll see how that's going to be. So a lot, lot to go on right now. Who would benefit by this laptop? Good question, Raphael. Uh, I would say a student would like this. I would say a content creator on a budget would like this. Somebody who would be looking at the XPS 15 or 17 might want to look at this to save some money. Uh, not quite as premium, but very premium in its own right. I would look at it, again, students and, again, a good general purpose laptop. I think it would appeal to a lot of people. Um, according to William, the one drawback to these PCs is the poor webcams they put in these 1080p should be the absolute minimum. Yes, I agree. This webcam was nothing to write home about. Nothing special, expe nothing especially terrible, but nothing great. All right, we got starting to get some people back, 60 people here. Um, why do laptops always put 720p webcams? Because these were designed before the pandemic, before the the everybody was working from home pretty much, and now they're paying the price really because they're trying to catch up. We're going to start seeing some more. I did the uh, the dragon the Dragonfly Max, which definitely by HP, which definitely has a, a high end camera. It was very good on that one. We saw a couple of others, but for the most part, we're still seeing the 720p webcams, and that is disappointing. So, and, and I know it's specifically because we're working from home. Uh, yeah, okay, fan, understand, that's just around the bezel. Right around here, it's all metal. Everything else is metal. 
So again, half the price. So half the price. So keep that in mind. What is the maximum TDP of the RP RTX 3050? I don't know. I want to say 45 watts, but somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I could be wrong on that. So if somebody knows that answer off the top of your head or you have that answer ready, ready please let us know. The audio is, Raphael, the audio is the weakest point to me. And, and again, for the price, I'm not going to kill them too much because I think they are pa packing a lot in here, a 3K display, a premium display. They're packing an RTX 3050, which is a very capable GPU. RTX, uh, the, the Core i7, 11800H, 11 11th gen processor. So if the audio is, is adequate, I would say it's, it's gonna get the job done, but if you wanna connect to a wired headphones or Bluetooth headphones, you'll have a much better audio experience. Yeah, I didn't find that the, the internal mics were that great either. It wasn't terrible. Um, benefit accountants looking at an Intel A. All right. All right, we're having bandwidth issues. It seems like when I go to the uh, laptop, it seems like it gets bandwidth issues. Hmm. It should be okay now. Oh, I hate when this happens. I don't know how much longer we're going to go. It should be better now. Okay, it looks like we're okay. All right, people, I don't know if we're going to keep going much longer. I hate this. <laughs> I hate it. Cox, if you're, if you're watching, please bring me the fiber in my neighborhood. I know you have it in other neighborhoods here in Las Vegas. Let's do it. I got the best plan I can get in my neighborhood, uh, William. It's the best one available, but this buffering is ridiculous. Uh, I got, I get nine, I think I get 980 down and I get 35 mil, megabits per second up. So I need, I need better. I need more professional. So we're going to see what happens. The Swift X, my friend, I have coming. Uh, it's here. We're going to talk about it in the video. Uh, for you, for you, what is better? X1 Carbon Gen 9 or Yoga Slim 7i Pro? I'm interested in the processor. So that was the other uh, laptop that I looked at. We could take a look at it right now real quick. If I have it here somewhere. Let me, let me look for it. Okay, so this is the yoga and this is the slim 7i pro this is the intel variant uh as you can see here i'll just put it on top of that it's a glossy display as you can see and here you can see it a very glossy display so i released this video uh a couple of days ago and it's doing very well so what this is um and let me turn this off this is going to annoy me now Okay, uh, we can go to the system specs here. And you know what? Uh, I'm not going to use that HDMI because I think that was slowing us down. So let me just go here. We're looking at a core i7 11370H. This is a four core, eight thread processor. This has 16 gigabytes of RAM. It's soldered in. It's dual channel RAM. Uh, this also has the MX450 GPU, and the numbers were pretty decent, uh, as we saw. So if you didn't see this video, check it out, because it was pretty good. Um, it did well in the battery department. It did well in the, uh, the speed department in terms of the SSD. Here you can see the R15 test that we did. We did the R20. It's all there. It's all there. Pretty good performance. 
Thunderbolt 4 on this, which is a big differentiator between this and its AMD counterpart, which I have here also. But that's a Ryzen 6. That's a engineering sample, so it's not a retail sample. This is more of a retail sample, although I, I'm not 100% sure if this is not also an engineering sample because there are some uh, things on it, like a couple of screws that are a little different. Uh, so I wouldn't think this is retail. All right. Is there a way to check for defections? Huh? I get that this is a Dell Inspiron 16 Plus, but my new XPS 17 arrives next week. So that's a great laptop, right? That's a great one. And now my full review on that is, is coming this week, by the way, for sure. So there you go. Um, we have 58 of you watching. Again, holiday weekend. I'm not expecting a lot of people. Would you choose this over the IdeaPad 5 Pro 16? So would I choose, are you talking, so you're talking about the one on the bottom here. So would I choose this, this one? Uh, I don't want to say because I do have a video coming up on that. <laughs> so I'm going to go, I want to do a head to head on those. Uh, what they're talking about is this, hold on. So we can look at it here. This is the idea 5 Pro 16, which I'm absolutely loving. 2.5 is a 2K 2.5K display or QHD display, I should say. Um, here you can see it. I'm loving this. So this is really, this is the Intel one, the AMD one. I have two separate videos coming on that. So I'm going to let you know which one I prefer, but I, I like it. There's some bloatware on it, but I'm loving this uh, all metal design. This is a 90 hertz refresh rate display, uh, which is great. It gets pretty bright. I think 360 nits, which is what I measured. We go to advanced display settings here. You can see, oh, I'm sorry, 120 hertz. The Slim 7i Pro is 90 hertz. This is 120 hertz. I'm sorry, I misspoke on that. But yes, this is 120 hertz display. Same with the AMD variant. So we got a lot of stuff going on here, people. A lot of uh, interesting laptops we are looking at now. Brandon is asking, uh, sound and display wise, 16 plus or the IdeaPad Pro, 5 Pro, which is better? Uh, display wise, the 120 hertz, I'm going to go with that on this one, even though the resolution is a little bit different, both 16 to 10, I'm going to give the slight edge to this one only because it's a little bit brighter and it has the 120 hertz. I agree, but not to say that that Dell display is not good. They're both good. Yes, and it's a matte display. So here you see no glare and reflections. And the same for the 16 Plus, by the way. So no touch displays on any of these. There are no options on those. So just for people wondering. And don't be uh, fooled by the yoga name on the Slim 7i Pro. I know some of the comments were, why don't I show the pen? Why don't I show the <laughs> convertible nature of it? Because it's not. It's a clamshell. No pen support. The branding has been rebranded, so to speak, by Lenovo. Ryoga no longer means a convertible with pen support. It now means a lot of different things. It's just a type of brand that it's a, it's a level of laptop that they're releasing. So it's a little confusing, and it's causing a lot of confusion in the marketplace. And some of the reasons, I think, why some of the big box stores and the big retailers are not carrying it because of that confusion it's, it's creating. So the battery bar uh, fan, and I've said this before in, in past streams and in videos, it's called Battery Bar Pro. Just do a search on Google. It's a free download. It's a pretty good uh, utility. So Battery Bar Pro. All right, we have 65 of you watching. Hope everybody's doing okay. Had a little bit of a couple of hiccups here in this uh, live stream. Uh, there was some buffering. I'm not sure what was going on. Uh, not not very good. I'm not happy about it. And again, Cox is what I have here as far as my internet. Uh, right now, it looks like it's holding up. I don't know how much longer we're going to go. We've been live for about a half an hour, actually 32 minutes, 33 minutes. So we're going to see how long we're going to go. Uh, which one do you prefer, Swift X or IdeaPad 5 Pro? Um, two different laptops. Swift X is a 14-inch laptop. Idea 5 Pad Pro is uh 
what is that, 16 inch. So I'm not gonna compare apples to oranges. Problems today? More tech, is it more technical difficulties? It looks like we're okay, Ben, with, oh, no. All right. Yeah, I'm going to end it right here, Raphael. We're not going to be able to go anymore. I want to thank everybody to for showing up. Unfortunately, technical difficulties uh, really ruined the live stream today. But uh, I want to thank everybody. Uh, I don't think we're going to keep going, though. We can maybe take a few more questions. It's back. I want to keep going, but I don't want to. It's going to keep coming in and out. The bandwidth is really bad today. Brandon, I reached out to Asus. Uh, I, I'm waiting. We'll see. They're not, they don't always come to me first. So I get what I can get. All right. Yeah. William, I'm going to probably wrap this up in a few minutes, but we seem to have recovered a little bit. And we had a good string of having good bandwidth, right? We were doing okay. I'm not really sure what happened. I want to keep going, but if the bandwidth doesn't, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really pay to keep going if nobody can see or he, hear me properly. I'll keep going for a few more minutes. Let's see how it goes, and then we'll play it by ear. Um, yeah, we had too many, too many disruptions with this uh, internet problems today. <laughs> Frago doesn't want me to end. All right. Yeah, it's working, William. Uh, we're gonna just keep going a little bit. I don't know if it, this is. This seems to be more like a glass trackpad to me, but I'm not. Not really sure. It's a very smooth surface. This is on the IDF 5 Pro. Um, I think it is, but don't quote me on that. I'm, all, I'm broadcasting in 1080p 60 frames per second, which I normally do. So this shouldn't be an issue. So it's definitely got to be the bandwidth or could be YouTube. But I'm seeing decent bandwidth. we will be getting the consistent bandwidth. Uh, so I'm not sure if it's YouTube or me. It could be on YouTube's part. So that's something to consider. So I, I normally do, so for those wondering, I normally do 1080p, 60 frames per second. Um, and I, ne I don't normally have these kind of issues, so we'll see. Uh, which has better speakers? We already talked about that. 1080p, correct, Raphael. So with problems with the bandwidth, I'm going to open it up to the floor. Any other questions? Is the key travel good on the IDEA 5 Pro, like the ThinkPad keyboard? Uh, not quite as good as the ThinkPad keyboard, um, Osama, but good nonetheless. I like this keyboard. It has a numpad. What do you think, William, of that numpad on this one, as opposed to the the one we just saw with the Inspiron? I know you like the Inspiron. Is this a good one, William? Both keyboards on the Lenovo and Dell are well laid out. Okay, thank you. That's good. good to hear. William is my go-to expert on the keyboards, especially ones with numpads, because he seems to really know his stuff on that. Uh, I don't use the numpad all that much. I do like when it's there. I use it when I have to. But if it doesn't have it, it doesn't bother me too much. I'm pretty, you know, ambivalent towards it. <laughs> I like the ThinkPad keyboard. So do I. I think they're great. What laptops does your family, wife, or children use? Uh, that's a good question. My wife uses an HP Spectre X360 from a couple of years ago. <laughs> and uh, my son uses an LG Gram 17. Uh, and then he has a gaming laptop. He uses the, uh, the Legion 5 Pro. All right. Numpads. Uh, I would start a crusade against them if I could. Yes, Executor Raptor. Uh, I understand that. Uh, you know, I, again, I'm ambivalent towards it. I don't have one preference or the other hit that like button people yes we have 57 likes with 52 watching not a bad ratio not a bad ratio and looks like bandwidth is holding up for now 
Do I have any comments on full compatibility with Linux? I don't. I, sh I need to start testing that. I'm just running out of time here, people. Keyboards without numpads look way better. It's just a matter of practicality. What do you need? You know, what are your preferences? So my favorite wireless or wired keyboard. Oh, I have to think about that. Um, you know, let me think about that a little bit. Yeah, 60 likes. Oh, we have 61 now. That's good. All right. You know, right now it looks like the bandwidth's holding up, but I don't know how much longer it's going to go. Um, so while we have some time here, do you want to see the, let's take a look at the um, Acer Swift X. We might as well. I'm going to release a video on it. So this is the Acer Swift X. Uh, this is a pretty interesting laptop. It's a two-tone silver with like gold on it. There you can see here. And you can see, and then of course the bottom. So it's like a two-tone here. And then you can see here, um, it's, got an R, it's got a Ryzen 7 processor. This is a 14-inch laptop, and what makes this pretty interesting is a Ryzen 7 processor, 5800H. That's a Zen 3. It's also got the RTX 3050 Ti. It's got some pretty good ports on it. Of course, no Thunderbolt. This is an AMD processor. Good key travel on this keyboard. It's a backlit keyboard. The um, We'll take a look at the display. It's a 16 to 9 display, which is my probably only gripe with the display. It's a 1080p. Resolution 1920 by 1080, but it is a pretty color accurate display. It's a matte display, so you don't need any glare or reflections. Um, you can see here that this is a, a pretty bright display. I think it's about 300 nits, which is what they're claiming. I'm going to bring it all in the video. I have a lot of it shot already, so just got to edit it. Uh, the touchpad is a little bit on the small side, but it is responsive. Um, I have no issues with that. It's a all metal. This is a pretty much all metal. I think the only plastic might be around the bezels over here. Not a big deal. Pretty slim bezels, I would say. Uh, has a nice webcam on it. And not, not great, of course, but, you know, that's what you get. So I wouldn't say it's nice. I would say it's adequate, but all metal design. And this comes in at around three pounds or so, which is pretty amazing considering it has a pretty nice GPU, CPU combination here. So beautiful keyboard on that Acer. Yeah, I like it. I'm liking this a lot. Uh, I really recently just received this. I've been putting it through its paces. Ryzen 7 5800H. So it's an H series processor, not a U. And it has the RTX 3050 Ti. So um, I'm liking it so far. There's a lot to like on this. A couple of things though, RAM is soldered in, which I'm not happy about, but there is... Uh, upgradable SSD, upgradable Wi-Fi card on this. So I'll show you all that in the video. The keyboard on the Acer looks like a backlighting might be hard to see. Yes, that is one of the issues I did have with it. Uh, let me see. It's hard to see it here, but let me put on the backlight. So right now it's on. Let me see if I go to this. You can sort of see it there. In fact, let me zoom in. So, and I could take your comment off so you could see it, or you could see it better. Let me just, uh, so you can see it. It's kind of hard to see. It's kind of hard to see. Do Acer Swifts have a ton of bloatware? Like, it can be a little difficult to, there's not a lot of contrast between the white backlight and the key, which is silver. So, there you go. I was going to ask what laptop to buy that is a two-in-one. I have so many we could talk about. That's a whole show in itself. Are we having trouble again? All right. Uh, all right, probably we're going to call it a day here, people.
Yeah, but I think it's an omen. <laughs> I think it's an omen, people. Um, I'm not. I'm gonna probably unlist this because I don't know what it's gonna look like as a replay. Uh, too many bandwidth issues today. I am so. There's nothing I can do. It's not my fault because, you know, that is. This is the best internet I can get in my area. There is no better than this, and unfortunately, it's not good enough. Uh, Cox sucks. Cox really sucks. You know what? All right, people. It's uh, we're at forty-five minutes. We're gonna call it a wrap. Uh, I think it's just too many bandwidth issues, and I don't know if it's really worth it, to be honest with you. I want to thank everybody for stopping by, and uh, it was a good live stream when we could actually get it working, but uh, I have a lot more to talk about. If the bandwidth is better later today, I'm going to try to do one maybe later today, maybe tomorrow during the holiday. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I got a lot more to talk about and got a lot more videos to come. So I can work on the videos now, try to get some more out. But have a good one, everybody. I want to thank everybody for stopping by. I know it was a holiday weekend. Didn't get a big turnout. Didn't expect it. But I want to thank everybody. Nonetheless, thank the moderators. Thank William. Thank everybody. Raphael, thank you so much. Uh, you were great. And again, apologies. It just didn't work out today as we had planned. But that's the that's the whole beauty of the live stream. You never know what could happen, good or bad. So until next time, everybody, I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.